which will reflect on the life of St. John Gualbert, hailing from the noble Visdomini family of Florence, St. John Gualbert felt it incumbent upon himself, in accordance with the custom of his age, to avenge the murder of a near relative. When on Good Friday of the year 1013, he happened to meet the unarmed assassin in a narrow lane and was about to run him through with his sword, the latter threw himself at his feet and with arms outstretched begged for forgiveness and commended his soul to God. John thereupon forgave him and embraced him and when a little later he stopped to implore God's pardon for his own sins in the Benedictine church of San Miniato, the large crucifix bowed its head in approval of his act of mercy. Overcome, he asked to join the monks at San Miniato. Four years later, together with a group of stricter monks, John went to Camaldoli to protest against Simeonistic elections of Abbot Herbert. He there lived for 21 years until in 1038 he founded at Valambrosa a new monastery for those who like himself wish to lead a life of extraordinary austerity and penance. Here the law of silence was perpetual, the enclosure and poverty the strictest, and the monks were contemplatives who, contrary to the usual Benedictine rule, performed no manual labor. The latter was carried out by lay brothers, called conversi, for the most part illiterate men who had renounced the world or had reformed their notorious lives in mature age. Such lay brothers were an invocation of John's, which was radically adopted by other orders and became highly important in later centuries. The Valambrosan congregation grew rapidly after the founder's death, when some of its extreme austerities were modified and by the end of the 12th century it counted some 60 houses in all of Italy. Its greatest contribution to the church was its vigorous fight against the then prevalent evils of simony and concubinage among the clergy. St. John Gualbert died on the 12th of July 1073 and was canonized by Pope Celestine III in the year 1193.